Cape Town. It is often called one of the most beautiful cities in the world. But it is also one of the fastest growing cities in Africa, with 50,000 new people settling there each year. And it is one of the 25 global hotspots for biodiversity, a status that is threatened because of rapid urban development. Despite having the Table Mountain National Park in the heart of the city, vast tracts of irreplaceable lowland fynbos have been lost forever. So the city of Cape Town, in partnership with the Botanical Society of South Africa, South African National Botanical Institute, and the Table Mountain Fund, have started an innovative project called Cape Flats Nature. So we can Local communities are involved to conserve nature in an urban setting where land is scarce and poverty widespread. Um, we're given four pilot sites that we can establish this sustainable management of these city nature sites in a way that benefits um, the communities. So we had E.D. Stevens Wetland Park, which is based in Philippine. Um, it's bordered between Manenberg, Guguletu, Nyang, and all those communities. It's called a yellow mustard plant, and it's an alien species. And then we had Wolfgart Nature Reserve in False Bay, between Kailicha and uh, Mitchell's Plain. We had Harmony Flats Nature Reserve, which is in, in the Strand. And then we had Makasa Dunes in Kailicha. So all four of these sites are based in where the most uh, impoverished communities of Cape Town are found. And all of them are different in terms of their vegetation, and their uniqueness in terms of dunes, um, wetlands, and, and um, precious famous areas. So what we did was that in all four of these areas, we had a very intensive public participation to find out um, if we do support communities to manage these sites, what are they going to be doing to, to make sure that these areas will benefit them. Cape Flats Nature Success lies in a people-centered approach to conservation. Work here encompasses three interrelated aspects, environmental education, recreation, and job creation. All the activities that we have were generated from a very wide stakeholder engagement process where people came with ideas, this is what we want to see happening in these sites, and this is what we want to do in order to make sure that this happens. For instance, we've got holiday programs where kids, which previously would come and hunt birds in a nature reserve, but now are involved in bird ringing, identifying birds, which is something which is very important for these kids to be able to connect with nature. We've got wide programs where kids come and learn about dunes and learn about the different plants that we found in these areas. And we involve communities in developing food gardens um, in nature reserves. Um, and then also we empower communities also to take what they can see in nature reserve in their communities, for instance, like a nursery, people establishing, uh, establishing um, food gardens in their areas. Basically what we want to do here is we want to teach communities how to start their own vegetable gardens, and we also want to teach communities on the uses of medicinal uh, plants. Another important project is the Cape Flats Nature Trail. It begins at Wolfgat Nature Reserve, goes through the Philippi farming area, and ends at Edith Stevens Wetland Park. Scholars learn about the natural and built environment and the value of these nature areas in the heart of their communities, plus the threats to their survival. The Wolfgat Reserve has reintroduced various animal and bird species and so the trail provides a rich learning experience. At the Makassar Dune site, Cape Flats Nature faces some of its biggest challenges. One of these is having not been declared a nature area and so ongoing education with city councillors and community members about its valuable environment function is crucial. These dunes are, if you look in the Cape Flats, uh, the last remaining and extensive dunes left on the Cape Flats. Um, it forms a protection barrier between the harsh conditions along the beach or the coast um, and it protects the people behind it or the communities behind it. Cape Town's settled urban edge is grown by over 1,000 hectares a year and the Makassar dunes are right in the middle of this ever-expanding metropolis. Um, so it, it's one of the biggest challenges where you're trying to raise awareness that you can't build a house on a dune. A dune is a moving system. Um, so 
that, that, that constant awareness raising and, and initiating a dialogue and talking to people about that, it's, it's been a difficult one. We're trying various efforts. Uh, one of them is environmental education. We have a few big events like a Dunes Day or Weed Buster where we have about 200, 300 learners. Um, we invite about 15 odd schools. But we're trying to, to have quality instead of quantity. So we're going to the schools and the teachers and getting them to come and bring their, their classes to do a curriculum-based lesson at Makassar. One of the important functions of these urban nature areas is to create a safe environment close to the poor communities where people can de-stress and learn about nature. People need to be connected with nature. You don't have to drive all the way from Kailicha to Table Mountain in order to be connected with nature. You can do it from your doorstep, just around the corner from your house. So that's one of the most critical things that we're wanting to bring to these communities, that connection with nature. This stuck here on this as 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 binne loop afstand is eintlik voor my voordeur. Ek het 'n probleem as ek na die natuur as ek wil uitgaan om te leer van die natuur of my kinders, my kleinkinders te wil leer van die natuur nie. Dis wat hom so uh, 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 belangrik maak. It's not a matter of just getting people to be involved in activities, but you want people to take responsibility of these areas. Ons gaan nou ons gaan nou die land skoon maak nê, ons gaan die so vir ons hamme die flat skoon maak. Van jullie weet moest alles maken elke jaar met vakantie dit maken ze het lekker schoon. Je hebt gezien daar mensen daar alle bouwrommel, dat mensen al beginnen afgooien daar in die nacht. Dat moet niet gebeuren niet. Als jullie zien mensen gooien vullen die zo, maak je zaak wie is die? Moet niet met hem praten. Schrijf net zijn nummer af. Als je niet zijn nummer kan afschrijven, je hebt penny. Probeer dat die bakkie zijn nummer aan je kop ondou. Jelle moet niet vier maken hier niet, moet niet die plek aan die brandstikken ze blijven. Hoor, die er vier het ons al bij van ons planten verloren en ons wil niet meer verloren. Ons kan niet bekostig om meer te verloren. Providing training for the volunteers is a vital aspect of the work. This training ensures that once the work with Cape Flats Nature is done, the volunteers will be sufficiently skilled to find work elsewhere. The conservation managers employed by the city of Cape Town at the four sites are not only conservationists, but also important social development agents, bridging the gap between conservation and community. Um, environmental education is a, is a big, big uh, function of what we're doing within the city. Um, partners like Cape Flats Nature uh, are, are important partners in, in using our facilities as educational platforms uh, for school groups, for adult groups, um, teaching people not just about nature, what, what plants are, what animals are, but uh, so much of our natural diversity is part of our cultural heritage. The two are often linked together. So in our phase one um, of our project with the first three years, it was demonstrating that you can do this in this context of poverty. You can manage these areas. You can get communities involved in looking after these precious nature sites. So our second phase now is about taking what we've learned on our first phase and putting it widespread on the city. Um, the city has something, um, has, a, has, a, has, a, has a strategy which is called a biodiversity strategy and part of that they've identified about 200 and something sites across the city um, which are important to, to, con to conserve the maximum biodiversity which we have in the city. So what, we have, what we're trying to do now is that the successes of our phase one, we're going to be trying to replicate that now across the city which is going to be a challenge but um, it, it can be done definitely. There's support and participation in environmental education at Macassar Dunes. <laughs> so well done to all of you who got certificates. That's fantastic. And I don't think nature conservation in the city of Cape Town can survive without all of us, without people there to help it and keep it and make it happen. Kom ons bewaar hier is stukje grond. Ons pas hem op soos een stuk goud, want as hy verloren gaan, dan het ons niks hier rondom nie. Oorals wat ons gaan, ons kan nou Kaapstad toe gaan, is net gebouwe. So moet het wees, is net gebouwe. Daar is nergens meer ondendelike stukje natuurgrond binnen ons gemeenskap. So, dis die boodskap. Kom ons bewaar hierdie skatkes wat ons hier binnen ons besit het, vir ons kinders en ons kinderse kinders. Come on, come on, come on.
I think Careless Nature has got a strong philosophy about if you care for nature, nature will care for you. I think that's incredibly important.